This is our early bird group. <laughs> <laughs> well, who wants to leave the world behind? <laughs> who wants to go home? <laughs> yeah. So we thought we'd do the lesson for today. It's lesson 11 today. Guess it is uh, January 11th. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens? So yeah, these lessons, all the lessons of the course, help us go home. And these early ones are super profound and helpful. So today we'll do number 11. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. This is the first idea we have had that is related to a major phase of the correction process, the reversal of the thinking of the world. So we are in a major correction process and this is a major phase we're in and it's the reversal of the thinking of the world. It seems as if the world determines what you perceive. Who agrees? It seems like the world determines what we perceive. It seems that way, you know? And I, I think I take my hand down because I've started to see it is not so. It is not so. It is not so. You know, Jesus really calls us to start to look at our minds. He says, if you... If you want to be happy, so do this, you know. This lesson is very, very helpful. So today's idea introduces the concept that your thoughts determine the world you see. Today's, today's idea introduces the concept that your thoughts determine the world you see. Be glad indeed to practice the idea in its initial form, for in this idea is your release made sure. The key to forgiveness lies in it. The practice periods for today's idea are to be undertaken somewhat differently from the previous ones. Begin with your eyes closed and repeat the idea slowly to yourself. Then open your eyes and look about, near and far, up and down, anywhere. During the minute or so to be spent in using the idea, merely repeat it to yourself, being sure to do so without haste and with no sense of urgency or effort. To do these exercises for maximum benefit, the eyes should move from one thing to another fairly rapidly, since they should, they should not linger on anything in particular. So we shouldn't linger on anything when we do this lesson. We should move very rapidly between different things we see. The words, however, should be used in an unhurried, even leisurely fashion. My meaningless thoughts show me a meaningless world. The introduction to this idea in particular should be practiced as casually as possible. It contains the foundation for the peace, relaxation, and freedom from worry that we are trying to achieve. On concluding the exercises, close your eyes and repeat the idea once more slowly to yourself. Three practice periods today will probably be sufficient. However, if there is little or no uneasiness and an inclination to do more, as many as five may be undertaken, more than this is not recommended. We can do this. We can, we can, we can do this together here. We can look around fairly rapidly at, at stuff things around us, near and far, up and down. 
and slowly repeat in our minds, my meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. Don't figure anything out, we just do this. And then we close our eyes. Actually, I said begin with your eyes closed, but I think most of you did. We can close our eyes afterwards. That's okay. He's not getting angry if we get it wrong. <laughs> so we could just take a deep breath. And we can even forget about the lesson. And allow whatever thoughts that are here today, right now, just to sink, sink down, sink away, as they are not that important. Just let your mind rest for a moment. Let your whole being rest. Forget about your day. Forget about people. Forget about concerns. Just relax for a bit. Allow this soft, gentle presence to be the only experience we have. Just being open.
release any thoughts again. Just relax again. together again to release what doesn't serve and find the inner joy, the inner joy of realizing that the world we believed in wasn't real. And we find this lightness The world can seem very serious when we believe in it. Meaningless thoughts show us a meaningless world. We need to realize that our thoughts make the world we see. The interesting thing with thoughts is we believe we can keep them to ourselves privately. It's not like they are, it's no like speaker going out with every thought we have. They are quiet. We think we can keep them inside. But Jesus says there are no private thoughts. He says, literally, there are no private thoughts. And yet, he says, you're only aware of private thoughts. It's the only thoughts of which you are aware. So that must mean that you're dreaming. That must mean that these private thoughts aren't reality and they can change they can be released really fast too the mind can can change in an instant from wrong to right thinking from wrong mindedness to right mindedness And right-mindedness is where we're open to true thoughts, we're open to being led and directed by the light, by the truth, 
instead of by doubt, instead of by ego and fear. And, and he says, all it takes is willingness. All it takes is this little willingness to make this shift. So we want to release those private thoughts and those private minds, the belief in private minds. You need to stop figuring out the world. We definitely need to stop trying to figure out the riddle of ourselves, this preoccupation, and trying to figure out the separate mind. Put that on the altar. We don't want to project the world first and then believe it's out to get us or out to do something to us. We don't want to make that joke on ourselves. We can say, release the world and let it go. Release the past and let it go, for it is gone. And release the world and let it go, for it is gone. The world was never even here. It's a memory. We can let it be a fading memory. We can trust so much. And we can let our familiar world just kind of fade away a bit. And make room for what spirit has for us can make room. For the spaciousness, for the, can make some space for the light to come in. If there are emotions or, or thoughts that bother you or that feel limiting, you just acknowledge that. Just allow it to come up, to see where, where in you you feel it. Acknowledge. Do you feel something in your stomach, in your chest, in your heart? Just acknowledge where you feel the feeling. And maybe when you acknowledge it, it goes away. And this can be just an inroads. We don't have to focus or fixate on the body or emotions, but it can be an inroads to spirit and, and to an undoing of the intellectual constant inner talk or figuring out in the mind. We can put the intellect on the altar.
the brain maybe. Is Jesus says that we either see the flesh or recognize the spirit. So recognizing the spirit must be an experience beyond what we see, beyond what we perceive. This perception of the world is spoken about here. It seems as if the world determines what you perceive. But we want to not even perceive. We want to recognize the spirit. We want to see that we projected the world. And that's the key, that's like the gateway to recognizing the spirit. Because if we projected the world, the world cannot threaten us anymore. There would be this joke that we would start to laugh at that, at the belief that the world can do anything to you, that people can be in any certain way without your thoughts having had an influence on what you perceive, that's impossible. Perception is a mirror, not a fact. That's good. It's good to know that God is a fact. Nothing else is really a fact. So are there any thoughts here that you would like to speak? Something you want to put on the altar? Sandra. Hi. <laughs> I just have to move this camera up. Hello. 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 God, I haven't um come on here in a long time. Well, I I have come on. I I was here in October, but I've I haven't spoke on here in a long time. I think the last time I spoke up in one of the expressions was like last year. <laughs> and yeah, it's just it, fear is what stops me from coming here. Just this really big fear around speaking with people um not only on zoom here with e but just in, out in the world you know um just just feelings of uncomfortableness awkwardness and you know around maybe some people but not not all people and um yeah I just want to look at that and hand it over to the altar. Mm. Um, just, yeah, I just wanted to kind of say that. I don't know if there's anything else I would like to talk about unless it comes to me. Um, 
but I just wanted to speak up about the fear mm -hmm. that I have. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Does that feel good. better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I used to have similar fears, Sandra. I used to feel that fear of people, mm. fear of talking, feeling awkward, feeling like I don't fit in or I feel it feels uncomfortable. Like, what do you talk to people about? How do you talk to people? How do you interact? You know, all these strange feelings. I feel that so much mm. just out in the world and just just as you said I just don't fit in and it's just I yeah I just feel and I don't fit in and it's like a big play and trying to say the right thing and being fake and laughing at things that I don't find funny and you know it's just just this role that I've played you know and I've really it's kind of come to light this last year and I've really seen it you know and it doesn't feel right and I just want to find my authentic self but at the same time I'm scared as well so yeah. Yeah. just like I got in the middle of my old ego self and who I really want to be and I'm just in this place of I just don't know where I am and yeah it's just it's just hard <laughs> yeah and there can be such pressure to, to find your authentic self or to, to become someone who is confident in the world, or, you know. But when you said, I don't fit in, I heard the Holy Spirit clear, loud and clear say, yeah, no, you don't. You don't fit in and you shouldn't fit in because you belong with me, Spirit says. You belong, you're already with, with Spirit. You're already... You're already in the in the truth, you know, and that's where you belong, and and that's the only place where you belong, and that's the only place where you need to feel like you belong. You can't let go of this pressure because, you know, I figured it out once. I had this realization that nobody knows how to be. Nobody knows how to be in the world. There is no right way to be. And when I realized that, I thought, oh, I might as well just relax then and let, let God decide everything. Yeah, I just, you know, I just think I think about too much, like all day nearly. <laughs> you know and yeah it's just yeah just it's too much um, yeah. and yeah it feels good talk just handling that over yeah 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 you need yeah. your mighty companions yeah because yeah. <laughs> back when I was coming on here like a year and a half ago and I just found myself being more happier around that time and this last year I just haven't been happy and I just think I need this I need to be coming on and expressing and you know yeah yeah it feels good it feels really helpful yeah <laughs> yeah you can come to all the meetings we have three times a week and there are other ways to join too, even more than that. Yeah. 
Thank you. Really, really good to see you again. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Who else would like to share something? Andrea? Yeah. Um... I mean, I really can't, I know I've heard this so many times, but it feels like so true to me. Like I cannot tell where I am in the process at all. It's like so disorienting. And today I was like working with a belief that really like, it was very hard to, find the willingness to believe that maybe this thing wasn't true. Like it felt so true. So I was like, okay. So that was confusing. And then I kept kind of working with it. But then what happened was, you know, just like kind of holding the lesson and this experience about kind of a belief like ultimately that would put me in an unfairly treated kind of victim we missed the beginning, Andrea, because oh. our internet shut off for a moment. Oh. So what was okay. the belief you're talking about? Yeah, uh, the belief, I didn't say it specifically. It's It was a belief. So it's like, I mean, I can recognize it as ego, like so majorly, but I'm, I can feel so identified with it. It's like this belief that like other people win and I lose. Like, oh, it's like so like juicy right so it's like I have this I won't go into the story but I I was in a long term work partnership that I recently left wasn't working for me I left and then I went into this whole string of ideas that I've been unfairly treated and whatever it's insane but <laughs> The thing that I want to share is, okay, so this belief comes up and it's very, it's almost like it's so disorienting. The, it seems so real. It seems so real. So I was working with it, but then the thing that I noticed while I was meditating and noticing everything is that I I'm just like terrified of my own thoughts. It's terrifying. These thoughts like are terrifying. So I was just very much like, I don't know how to orient in the place where I believe any of these thoughts. I mean, I get it. It like so fits with the lesson today. But I really felt like, okay, this is so terrifying to be at the, to not have anything else, but believing that these thoughts are actually meaningful. It's just, and I, at that moment, I was like, I don't even know how to orient in the process. Like I was asking for help and I was praying, but it was just really like, it's just feeling like so much terror of like not being in control of my thoughts, they're not even my thoughts, ego thoughts, the ego, right? So obviously I'm still super invested in believing these thoughts, you know? And it feels just, it's just awful. I, I And I, I want so deeply for that like deeper shift 
you know, it's like what you said earlier, like, I'm not going to raise my hand because I'm starting to see something different. And I think it's probably like my faith is still weak. And I just kept reminding myself, like, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists, but I just, I don't know feels very chaotic still, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm mean, the reason I'm even sharing is like, of course I wanna release like all of these insane thoughts, but I'm more sharing for like some kind of encouragement of like, like I, what do you do when you like see this and you're just like, this feels like shit, man. <laughs> You know, maybe I don't want peace as much as I think I do. I don't know, you know, so I don't know. I'm just saying it for just for like the Holy Spirit to come through somewhere, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good, Andrea. You see how much you want to protect your thoughts. Mm. Or that you said there about you, you quit that work relationship and then you projected you were unfairly treated you know there's something you said to that fear of, of loss or fear of being yeah misperceived or something yeah i could see in the whole sort of event i can see some very graphic like aspects of the ego like I can see and I mean these things I, I'm not thank goodness they're not who I am but it's like even to admit this darkness is very like difficult but it's like I could see the part the part that like I want to be the one who always has the advantage mm -hmm. I want to be the one who always is winning or who always is have like it's really the just that egoic place of that mis belief that like we actually get something when someone else loses like that insanity you know it's like i can just see how how vicious it is you know because i can just i can see it rise up in the mind there's there's this belief that's like oh if i'm in the advantage, I'm going to be happy, you know, and yeah, I just want to put all these things down and I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm determined, you know. Yeah, that's good. You use the description, like it's, it's terrifying, you know, these thoughts are terrifying. Well, you know, we when we hear the word terrorist, we think of like, oh, you know, one person or some bad group, you know, who, who wants to hurt people. But really, the ego is the terrorist. The ego is the only terrorist. The ego is always terrorizing us with its thoughts. But the good news is it's not as bad as it seems. And, and the way through it is to be with it, is to kind of you know, hold it up to the light, look it straight, you know, in the light and see that it's not what it seems to be. You know, Jesus even shows us the contrast. Sometimes he says it feels like thick or dense, you know, like bands of iron and steel. Like this is what our ego thoughts feel like when we're in them. But then when we're through them, he, he calls them like a little wall of dust or, you know, they're like the lightest gentlest most substanceless things and that's what we want to get into but the way to get there is to be with it is to see it is to kind of again allow it to show itself in the light and then allow the light to show that it's not really anything yeah i've had some experiences of what you're talking about i mean in a of like just the grace of like seeing something in a particular way that I wasn't in control of and it just <laughs> and but I 
I think there's a part of me that wants to like figure, I mean, I know Holy Spirit's in charge of that, right? So it's like still me being the doer, right? But it's like, like, oh, there's some systematic way to get there all the time. Like, but mostly I feel like really oppressed by these thoughts and I, they still feel very substantial to me. But I have had moments like where just like, yeah, where I was like, oh, look at that. And suddenly it just, and I'm like, oh, that's what Jesus is talking about. But I don't know how to make it happen again, <laughs> basically. Wow. I think just stay with it because those big shifts do happen, but yeah, we, we can't know when the big shift is going to unfold. Sometimes it feels like a tiny little chip away at a boulder, but sometimes we chip and then the whole big hunk of it just falls away. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you're laughing, you're laughing at the pattern. And that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 you yeah. laugh at how you see the ego, how you see you want to be the one on top. You want to be the one. You see the ego, basically, and then the, the, how it wants to protect something. And it is meaningless, it is laughable. So I like seeing you laugh at it, you know, and this is it. You don't have to figure it out more than that, but keep seeing it, keep laughing at it, keep looking at it, keep looking at that ego, <laughs> that little me, that it is meaningless, you know, we can, we can put it on the altar, we can safely do that. But yeah, it, it can feel scary. It can feel like, okay, well, what is it instead? Or what it, you know, what's going to happen then? Yeah. Well, I'm, I definitely feel excited to find out what's beyond this. Because mm -hmm. I'm, this is so not fun. It's not fun, you know? So I really identify with there, there must be another way, you know? And that is kind of what brought me to the course, even after decades of doing other practices that are really valuable. It's like, so yeah, but I appreciate this space. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I like the laughing, laughing the ego away. We don't need to be serious about it. It will disappear when we can laugh at it. We don't take ourselves so seriously anymore. See that little eye that constantly wants to defend itself, defend something meaningless, make a difference between you and others. It is crazy. It is meaningless. There's another lesson early on. Maybe there was recent the, the one the meaningless world engenders fear. You know, just because it is believed to be real and it's believed to be outside and, and done to us, that's why it engenders fear. So, yeah, I like the willingness here in the group here the mind, the, the willingness to take a good look at it. 
If anybody else wants to speak about something, take a look together, go for it. You're very welcome. And just give us a wave, we'll probably see you. Richard. Yeah, I guess what just came to mind for me is I just, well, one thing is I see coming back from being in community, here I am struggling with guidance. And the other day I stayed on the computer for three hours trying to make something work that just clearly wasn't working. And I was pushing and forcing it until I felt like King Kong trying to break the chains, you know, in the famous movie scene, I was just so enraged. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess, yeah, that's kind of on my mind. I've come back for the month to close down the company and, and it just feels like I don't have a lot of control. I sold my car, so that's great. And there were some miracles around that too. It, it, it wasn't totally smooth, <laughs> but, but then it turned out and there were some deep lessons around it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to sell my couch and stuff like okay. a really stupid, expensive couch. So I have to get this money to be able to fold my company because I'll owe tax money and, and this sort of stuff. Right. Uh, but it, yeah, and so I'm picking up a little bit of work here and there, but I'm starting to think, I don't know, should I reconnect with them and say, hey, maybe I need to stay here and work a little bit. I guess it's uncomfortable sitting here and just going, waiting for things to sell. It doesn't, and I'm not feeling very productive. Hmm. And, um, you know, it's one thing being in Mexico, it's like, it's like my day is laid out. I'm joining, yeah. this is what I'm going to be doing. I get up and I do, and I was even starting to look forward to doing electrical work, which I've hated all my life. I've mm -hmm. always thought there's got to be something better than this. And so I've just finally, it's landed for me that, oh my God, all of my fear lessons are connected to doing electrical work. That's why <laughs> I was running the whole time, uh -huh. thinking something was better because my the same fear and same stuff wasn't coming out. So there's been an acceptance of like, okay, I get it. I get it like like there's no running to or running from this is where the lessons are beautiful for now yeah there's kind of this sort of place to relax in when i'm in mexico or at the monastery where here's your function just to do this mm -hmm. don't know what's happening and and i don't know yeah. what i need exactly well, it sounds like you know what you need to do. Like you have even a function there now to, to sell those things and wrap those things up. And yeah, to pray about that and focus on how the how around that. What would the Holy Spirit have you do every day to make that possible in the best way possible, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah yeah it's good it's good you get some contrast experience too the, the flow of being in community and yeah having it laid out having guidance and then the contrast yeah. now what yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly now what yeah, yeah. it it's yeah, I mean, it's funny how work functions that I used to think, oh, God, oh, I used to just yearn for, oh, it'd be great not to be working and just have free time. <laughs> and now it's like it's, it's flipping. It's just like, oh, gosh, it'd be good to be a, doing something like my friend has a little bit of work here and there. And I just enjoy going out with him to help him with his work yeah cool <laughs> yeah when you work for for spirit for jesus you it doesn't matter what you do you just be happy you know it's this flow 
it just doesn't matter like you said you used to hate that job and now you, you love it you like it because it's purpose you're in purpose you're you have purpose in you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. starting to see the miracles and stuff and the when when I go, oh my God, I don't. Want, oh, this is going to be terrible. And then, then the miracles happen. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. I was shown the next step. It wasn't so terrible. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. It feels like your your heart is so much lighter now than. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that a transformation there for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no more and no more drugs. I'm not on any prescriptions or anything anymore. Yeah. all of that stuff oh yeah. and you look much clearer you feel much lighter yeah yeah, yeah. Good news. Good news. we're cheering you on yeah <laughs> yeah thank, thank you blessings blessings thank on you. your next steps and everything mm. thank you jenny thank you barry mm. love you love you richard yeah, yeah love you guys mm -hmm. love you. <laughs> They're all so loved. They're all so loved. There is light just burst. <laughs> Anyone else want to put something on the altar? And I'm sure you're doing it, even if you don't speak it, you know. This altar is available, this, this place in our mind. It's the only real place there is. It's the, it's the spirit. You can feel it, you can feel. truth of that how could the mind be contained within the body that just seems really weird the mind is everywhere the mind is vast powerful But it's not lost, you know, it is, it is spirit, it is um, sourced. It is sourced by the one source, by God, by the truth. If it feels lost, if the mind feels lost, then there are some confusions to forgive, some... some layers to release some fear actually it's the private thoughts I find that interesting you know that there are no private thoughts and yet that's the only thoughts you're aware of that must mean awareness it's off. That must mean that this little mind, this little cell that you call by your own name, isn't really needed, isn't really what you are, isn't really necessary. So that strong defense that that Andrea shared about and that you know you may recognize in yourself that defense of of the little me is meaningless is what 
we can release, is what we can start to forgive. And that's gonna, you know, in time and in this world, it's there all the time. It's there all the time. And time will be undone as that is undone. The world will be undone as that is undone. So we can just keep, you know, the way you can do it is you keep inviting spirit inviting the light in the beginning of my spiritual journey i came across something called something like universal healing but i got so fascinated by it because the teaching was that this healing was like beyond time available all the time and basically undoing time and you can forgive anything in the past and the future this was before the course and then the course came into my life and and it just explained you know it just stated everything even even clearer than that but, but yeah you know the, the power of your mind you can heal everything you can heal the past and even the future just by letting the light in to this experience of a private mind you know and you can do that anywhere anywhere you find yourself in any situation you can question the private thoughts in any situation and question that experience of being a little of me trying to navigate a big world. Let's question that. Let's put that little me on the altar. Yeah. Because it's just a little bit of defensiveness. It's built up of a little bit of defensiveness and fear. And, and we don't need that. We don't need to figure it out. We don't need to heal it. We can actually just give it over. And just pray for a shift, ask for a shift in the mind. If, if you notice it, if you feel the defensiveness or the fear, because we're not always aware of it, but we can become much more aware of it. If a self-concept is in charge, if, you know, because the self-concept is that defense and that fear. That's why it can be intense to come to community. It, it can be intense and helpful. The guys there in Cape Town has some experiences today, some stuff coming up and you know, one person was upset and walked out and, you know, and then we had a great call with them. I think, yeah, I think everyone felt lighter. You guys feeling lighter still? <laughs> Yeah, it can be very helpful, extremely helpful to come together with others. You see things in yourself you didn't know were there even.
Mm. And that's it for tonight. It's beautiful to join with you all. Mm. Glad that you come. <laughs> Yeah, we love you guys so much. Don't listen to those meaningless thoughts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we need the light as a replacement. Love you. Yeah, love you so much. <laughs> Have a great night, great day. <laughs>